All right. Hi. Uh, in this screencast, I uh, just want to quickly um, work up or derive the pointing correction, um, hopefully more so to show you that there really isn't anything mysterious to where this comes from. Uh, we won't talk about simplifying our phase equilibrium equations or simplifying our calculation of fugacity and when we can look at pointing correction in that, uh, but simply just to kind of show where it comes from. And then more discussion will be reserved for in class and um, our general screencast from the chapter. Okay. And so the basic idea is um, I'd like to calculate the fugacity of a compressed liquid or say a solid. Okay. So you know, for a system that is at a pressure greater than saturation at a given temperature. So if you think about a compressed liquid, if I'm at the same temperature, if I'm on the same isotherm, but I'm at a pressure greater than uh, saturation for that given T, right, compressed liquid. Uh, you could do the same thing for a solid, um, but, you know, same thing. So at a given temperature, I'm at a pressure greater than uh, corresponding saturation um, pressure. Okay, and so I'm going to want to calculate the fugacity of this compressed phase, okay, and so I'm going to write it as, in terms of log, log Fc, C being my compressed phase, right, and so this is going to be the fugacity at some given temperature and pressure, okay. And so, um, in the interest of just kind of space, I'm going to remove this temperature and pressure, and I'll just kind of make some comments as, as I work through things. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use my favorite mathematical trick. I'm going to add zero. So if I want to calculate log Fc, that's equivalent to log Fc, okay, that's my C, plus log fugacity at saturation minus log F sat. Okay. Now what this is going to correspond to is this will be A stay at the same temperature but at the corresponding saturation pressure. Okay. So you know if, if I'm on the same isotherm, okay, this state consider corresponds to where that isotherm hits my uh, saturation curve, where I hit my say phase envelope if I'm thinking about vapor liquid coexistence, where I hit my phase boundary. Um, so this is at saturation at that T. This is at some pressure greater than um, saturation. Okay, so I just applied my favorite trick of adding zero. Okay, or equivalently, I'm going to write this then as log F sat plus log F C minus log F sat. So I've rewritten it now is my log fugacity at saturation plus the log fugacity of my compressed phase minus that uh, log fugacity at saturation. Okay, where this is a change in fugacity at the same temperature. Okay, well, for an isothermal process, the differential of log F is equivalent to the differential of our dimensionless molar Gibbs free energy. Okay, and again, let me emphasize at constant t. Okay, so constant t, well dt is zero, so this is just v over rt dp. Okay. So if I want to calculate this difference in fugacity, this would be going from p sat to p, okay, where p is greater than p sat, that would be the integral from p sat to p times the differential of log f. And this this isn't you know f that's differential of log f um, is equal to log f c minus log f sat. Okay, so it's equal to this, and that's going to be equal to integral from p sat to p v over rt dp okay or log fc is equal to log f sat um, plus the integral of p sat to p v over rt dp Okay, so this term, right, even if we were just to box it in right here, 
All right, so this is our pointing correction. It's just the change in the log fugacity and going from uh, P sat to P at the same T. Okay, so equivalently, all right, this would become, all right, if I were to say, you know, think, consider this difference again, right, this is log FC over F sat is equal to integral P sat to P V over RT dP. So if I were to take the exponential of both sides, I have F C uh, F C over F sat is equal to integral from P sat to P V over RT dP. And therefore F C, fugacity of my compressed phase, is equal to my fugacity at saturation times the exponential of integral from P sat to P V over R T dP. Okay, so this again is my pointing correction. Right? The only all the pointing correction is is a change in my log fugacity and going from saturation to my compressed phase. Okay, that's all it is. There's no nothing magical to, to where this thing came from. Okay? Um, and so you know the significance of it really just comes from if okay, so FC then is equal to let me write this as Fsat times P sat. And I wish I could, you know, just <laughs> you know abbreviate my point into something, all right? It's integral of P sat to P V over R T DP. Alright. Now my pointing correction, you know, so far I've made no assumptions whatsoever. Um, but you'll typically see this written in another way. Um, so if you imagine if I'm in my compressed liquid region, and so if I think back to what an isotherm looks like for a compressed liquid, um, but typically compressed liquids, as long as we're you know, well removed from the critical point, we can assume that those liquids are incompressible. Uh, so what does it mean when a liquid is incompressible? Uh, well, what it means is its volume or molar volume is essentially independent of pressure, right? As I increase the pressure, the molar volume really doesn't change. Um, and so, you know, if I have this compressed liquid, and I assume that it's incompressible, that means that molar volume here is independent of pressure, so I could bring it out of the integral, okay? If we were close to the critical point, I would need to account for the pressure dependence of a molar volume and, and integrate this, you know, animal. But if I'm at, uh, if I'm removed from the critical point and I assume I have an incompressible liquid, uh, so that this is constant, I can pull it out. Um, and then this would become, if I just look at the pointing correction, molar volume times integral, well, and, you know, R and T are constant because this is just isothermal process, temperature is constant, P sat to P dP, and so this is just V times P minus P sat over RT, okay? So a common way that you'll see your pointing correction written then is um, as this. Well, I, I guess I should write as exponential of this, but if I assume that my fluid's incompressible, this is a more common way to write my pointing correction. So if I have an incompressible fluid, then right, pointing correction is just equal to this. You know, and kind of, you know, where pointing correction is useful is it allows us to make a, a hierarchy of approximations in terms of calculating FC, right? So uh, if um, you know, in the notes we have some numerical examples of you know when differences in such pressure become significant but if I'm at low reduced uh, temperature so if I'm well removed from my critical point um, oftentimes if I'm at um, you know so there's numerical examples to show that you know when we're well removed from the critical point that uh, this term can often be uh, neglected and there's magnitudes of you know what your pressure must be before this becomes significant but if my you know pressure is say one bar, right, even if saturation pressure is close to zero bars, um, oftentimes this term isn't very significant. Um, and so if, you know, so order of approximation one would be, you know, if we could assume this is insignificant, that's great. 
um, or if we just assume it's uh, incompressible, right, then you know I could still readily estimate this term. Then in terms of this first term up here, uh, fugacity of, a, of my saturated system, um, you know, if, again I'm at low uh, uh, reduced temperatures so that my and my vapor pressure or pressure is sufficiently low so my vapor phase could be assumed on ideal gas, then that allows me to assume that this term is one, and then PSAT I can um, readily estimate, say, using the Antoine equation. Okay. Uh, but the key of this notes is just to, you know, you know, give you some perspective or you know have you keep in mind that you know this pointing correction uh, isn't you know some magical term. It just core just gives you the uh, you know difference in you know, the log fugacity relative to that at saturation. So you're calculating fugacity relative to that at saturation. Uh, because the value at saturation I can uh, typically readily uh, calculate, um, or at the very least, you know, if I assume it's an ideal gas, well, I could definitely readily calculate PSAT. And so then I just have this additional correctional term. When cast in this form, I can readily calculate as well. Okay, um, But that is pointing correction.